Hello everyone, welcome to Ars Electronica Home Delivery. My name is Sandra and in today's segment I take you with me into our main exhibit on the floor minus three, into our exhibit called Understanding Artificial Intelligence. And that's what we're going to try to do today here as well in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to take a look at what an uh, artificial intelligence system uh, sees and how it can be trained, but also what are the mistakes it makes and what it cannot discover. First of all, we have to dive a little bit into how an AI system is trained, or more specifically, how this AI system you see behind me was trained. This is a so-called convolutional neural network. Sounds very confusing. In short, it's called CNN. Um, actually, it's not that hard to understand what it does. It just means uh, there are convoluted layers. It's not just one input layer, one output layer, and one layer in between that does all the work. There are many, many layers doing different tasks. That's an AI, uh, how an AI system is built. Um, every layer, every um, structure has its task, and in this case it was tasked to learn to see, to recognize different shapes, different images, different colors, and so on. And each layer has its own specific kind of seeing. I'm going to go into detail as soon as I show you uh, an object here, but first the segment deals with mistakes. So you have to be aware of an AI system and how it sees differently than us humans do. Because when we see an object, we know what it is. We can see the shape, we know the color, we have a mental image of it in our head. That's the important part here. For example, as a kid, we are trained with little uh, books with colorful pictures, that's a cat or that's a dog. And when we see a cat in real life or a dog, we can make the jump and recognize it even if it is a different color than it was in a little kid's book or when it is a different size or when there's more than one of course we can see there are different cats. For us we have this concept in our head. An AI system as smart as it is cannot do that. You can teach it how to see, you can teach it how to recognize shapes but it will never have a concept of what a cat is. It just recognizes for example the ears the face, the fur, and the color, and so on. That's very important to remember here. Now, let's take a look at how this CNN network works and how the layers work. I've already given you one uh, example. We have many here at the table to try out. And the first one I want to show you is a classic cap we know from movies or when we go to America, we see them everywhere, especially in New York, where this taxi is from. And it's a 2D image, so it's, it's flat. We know it was, uh, that's also important. I'm going to tell you in a second why. But first of all, let's take a look at the layers, what this uh, network does with the input information we've given it. So the input is the picture, the two-dimensional picture. That's the first it sees. And the first layer is tasked with recognizing forms, lines, structures, uh, as you see here, it's, got, it's also shading it differently. The, every layer is shading it with different forms of gray. And the first one is just trying to, to make out certain colors, certain patterns, and certain lines. Then it goes deeper into the second layer, where we also have forms, but it deals more with connected forms already. So that's important. First of all, it's single dots and lines. Then we have connected lines. Then we have shapes here and so on. This goes on more and more until it gets so abstract that we cannot recognize the picture anymore. Even as early as layer four, we cannot see that there's a cab in this picture anymore, maybe except here. And it makes it more abstract the deeper in we go. And here's where it gets interesting because it breaks it down into each single pixel. Pixels are, for us humans, something that we don't want to see on the screen necessarily because it would mean the resolution is not that great. But for an AI system, they are the most important part. So when it only sees pixels, it can analyze it in a depth that the human eye can never do. And that, that's what makes it so great for analyzing things. So when we look here at this layer, that's layer 16, we see that there are a thousand dots. You just have to believe me. 
this AI system was trained to recognize a thousand different objects. And the highlighted ones you see here are the ones where it is most sure that this is the correct answer. And it's also interesting that more than one dot is illuminated because an AI system would never tell you for like 100%, I'm sure that's a cap. It can go up to here to 99 point something percent, but it will never say I'm 100% certain. Because there could always be um, different factors that influence the decision of the AI, although decision is a big word again, because it just can make its, make its assumption based on what it's learned and how it was trained. Like I said, it does not have a concept of what it sees in his head. Right, so that was just to give you an introduction of what it can do. And now let's look at some mistakes, which is also uh, quite interesting here at this station because we see the results it thinks it could be, and there will be some pretty hilarious ones, uh, believe me. And just one word to this installation in general, uh, those 10 screens are actually unique in the world. Our uh, very own future lab designed this system because normally you would not be able to see inside an AI system like this. We have all those layers that do their work in the dark, basically. That's why they're also often called hidden layers and they're invisible. But our team at Future Lab managed to really make this invisible process visible. Just a few side notes. Let's get back to the table with our uh, samples. So the first one we did was a taxi. That was pretty easy. Let's do a different one, an animal for, uh, for a change. Let's put here this nice gorilla. It can recognize it, no problem. That's, that's pretty simple. It's a standard picture. Uh, we know gorillas how they look like. It knows the shape of the gorilla's face. So it's pretty certain that is a gorilla. There are also no distractors in this image. What is a distractor? For example, if there would be like a color that would not mix at all with the natural surrounding of the gorilla, it would totally throw off the result. Mm -hmm. So for example, if there would be like a, a purple um, scarf next to it, it could be that it would not recognize the gorilla appropriately. There was this special case with a very early AI system where scientists believed they already made a major breakthrough. They had pictures of different tanks, of American tanks and Russian tanks. And the AI system was tasked to sort which one is which. And they thought the AI system was so good. Almost every time it got the correct answer. But then they realized they trained it the wrong way, in the most hilarious way, actually. So what happened? How was the picture taken when it came to American tanks? It was most often uh, taken with uh, buildings in the background, with roads and greenery. And the Russian tanks were photographed mostly with snow. So what did the AI learn? It did not learn to recognize the shape of the tank itself, but the surroundings, the background, and it recognized snow. And it meant, OK, snow means it's a Russian tank. So we have to be careful not only what the picture itself is, but also of its surroundings. That's one issue where you can mess up how an AI learns. Another one. Uh, is when you change what it is shown. So we took two 2D pictures here, but we also have three-dimensional objects here. And I want to give you an example of how well it can do with such an object. You've seen it like this, it's a toy. Let's put this one in front of here. So it's pretty certain that is a zebra. Very good, it recognizes the shape, it recognizes the stripes. Even when I turn it around, it's still pretty certain that's a zebra because it probably trained from different angles to recognize it. Let's try it from the back just for fun. <laughs> now it gets interesting. So what happened here? Um, all of a sudden it says it's a black and gold garden spider. How is that possible? Well, we know a zebra from behind is still a zebra, but there are very few pictures from zebras taken from behind. So the AI system was not trained to recognize this particular angle. And it just kind of tries to come up with the thing that's closest to it. And the spider, sometimes I can imagine, is actually um, 
a photograph like this when it's hanging in its net and you see uh, his behind, you could say, maybe it says, okay, it's similar to a pattern I've seen before. That's one thing. Okay, let's look at another one. We had a little fun here with our little polar bear to confuse the AI as much as possible. So from here, it looks like a normal polar bear, but its head is tilted this way. So let's see if I put it like this, what the AI will see. Okay, it says toy poodle. Interesting, because a poodle uh, normally is white, I would say, or it's a common color. So it's a little bit confused, but it focuses on the color. As soon as I turn it around though, Ah, it says it's a tiger or a tiger cat. Why? Because it's confused. It does not know the stripes do not belong on this animal, so it tries to find something that it is familiar with. So that was just one more example. And the, the most fun one um, I saved for last. When I put, for example, my hand in front of the camera, look what it says. It does not recognize the hand. It says band aid. How can that be? It's an interesting uh, story actually, because when you look at commercials, for example, for band aids, where are they most of the time? Where are they applied? Well, of course, to the hand, when you have a little cut, for example. And so the AI, once again, just like with the Russian tanks and the American ones, has learned to recognize the surroundings instead of the actual object we wanted to remember. So we have to be aware of how we train it, what we train it for, and how much input we give it. So the more input we give it, the better normally, but we have to take into consideration how we wanted to see the different angles, the different objects, 3D objects, 2D objects, colors. Um, um, distractors, of course, can be in everyday real life situations. That's just a given. Because with early AI systems, there were just perfect pictures, uh, like studio-made pictures with no mistakes at all, but we know that's not real life. And we want to use AI systems in real life. It's the future, and so we need to train it with actual close to real life or real life images, with the structures, with different colors, and so on. So that's one thing scientists uh, really have to be careful about, and you can see how easy it is to mess it up. So it's a different, uh, difficult pro a process. We still need to learn a lot about it, and hopefully we will be able to make it as perfect as possible. But we are far away from 100%. But still, it's a good start. That's it for today's segment. I hope that was uh, a little bit easy to follow. I hope we can welcome you here at Ars Electronica Center live uh, and in person again to show you. You can try out those objects for yourself then. I wish you a good day and see you soon. Goodbye.